Welcome to Dead Man Tolkien. Tonight's story is a three-part series and from the incredible mind of deadly Faris Will from over on Reddit No Sleep. As ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Well, it really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled. I recently found out why the forest next to my town is off limits. Part 1. Let's get straight into that. I'm trying not to shake. It's been about a week since the incident. My therapist says to try and write down what happened. And so, here goes nothing. A town is not too big, about 270 people, and we've been here for 15 generations, or so says my pa. That said, everyone knows the stories of a beast that roams the woods. And that's who they were, stories. At least that's what my friends thought. And the story goes that a group of explorers, eight grown men, entered the woods, and they were seen about expanding into the woods since the other side of the town is bordered by a river. Only one got out alive, and he had drawn a thing that supposedly killed everyone else. It was like a mutated wolf, an amalgamation of many weird features. A wolf head and body, but it was big. Too big. According to the man that towered over them, the front legs looked like weird claws, almost like that of a praying mantis, except it crawled with them. And he explained that it had fur, but also quills like a porcupine. And so it's reasonable why most people thought he had a mental break. Though the official reports didn't state that he had a large gash over his shoulder blade, this thing managed to kill seven other men, yet let one off with just a gash. And so, teens started going into the woods looking for the beast they nicknamed the Preen Wolf Pine. I've checked every report on it, and all the teens were found mutilated. And so, they finally banned going into the woods and began telling people to teach their kids about the beast. And they did. Sadly, though, people stopped listening. And that's how Jake came to the conclusion that whatever it was had to be dead. And that's how my friends convinced me to join them. Jake was the leader. Tallest guy at 6'1", age 19, a quarterback of our hometown. Katie, his girlfriend second in command, 17 years old, and a pretty average girl. Ben, my partner for the venture, 18 years old, and the smartest guy of the group. And Liam, the chill girl who smoked weed, 15 years old, the youngest. And Carly, Liam's girlfriend, who was 17 years old. And finally me, the supposedly smartest girl, 5 foot 8, 18 years old. At the entrance to the woods, which wasn't much, just a natural animal path to a clearing, I looked around already fell and watched. Ben nudged my arm to get my attention, the group already walking in. I shrugged the bag to rest more comfortably on my back, but even with my gut telling me to turn back, I entered. I regret even packing that bag. Regret even entertaining Jack's theory that a beast was dead, but I can't change that. I went in following closely to Ben. At least we had a buddy system. So Phoebe, did they bribe you to join? Or do you think Jake's right? I laugh lights and hollow. <laughs> Neither. I guess I'm just curious. Ben nodded at my response as if he himself agreed or maybe he just didn't know what else to do. I suddenly wouldn't know what to do. Well, it took about an hour before we came upon a deer carcass. Jake commented on how recent it was. Something about how it hadn't attracted scavengers and it still looked to be bleeding. And how I knew it was recent was the vapour of warmth in the cold air. It's actually one of the things I have nightmares about now. And we continued on stupidly. Now it's clear that the deer was the first and only warning. My skin was covered in goosebumps and my hairs were standing on end. The feeling of being watched was stronger. But Ben looked around unnerved as well, which is why I asked him if he felt it too. He only looked at me, his eyes wide with surprise and worry. 
I guess I confirmed his fears. He in turn confirmed mine. Something was following us. Everything was rather quiet as we followed the tracks leading away from the dead deer. I looked back at the deer once again, my skin crawling as I saw its eyes. It looked wide terrified. The thing that killed this deer, well, I wasn't quick to kill it. I looked ahead seeing the two couples, holding hands of course, leaving Ben and I to feel awkward, being paired yet single. Carly was leaning on Leanne and the two sharing earbuds and listening to music. Jake was keeping his attention on the tracks and Katie was asking questions about the tracks. I could barely hear it as he responded. You know, I haven't seen these types before. They look like canine tracks, but they're way too big. I could feel my heart racing and the need to run out of the woods and back to the safety in town. But then a warm hand gently held mine. I guess Ben could sense my anxiety or maybe he liked me as well. I didn't pull my hand away because, I'll admit it, it did help quell my anxiety. But it didn't get rid of that feeling of being watched, being hunted. The smell of blood followed us. Maybe I stepped in it. And then we all froze. We spotted the quills, too long to be from a normal porcupine. I felt nauseous as my anxiety started spiking. A panic attack started setting in as Ben squeezed my hand gently. I looked at him in his pale face as he looked off in the distance. And I looked over, spotting it. The beast. Its lips curled in a snarl as it ran at us. The front legs curled like a mantis as it ran. The joints had claw-like hooks that dug into the ground to gain speed. And this thing ran at us. The closest group was Leon and Carly. And just as they looked at it, Leanne's short body was in its jaws, with Carly's left arm crushed in the canines. Leanne made no sound, but her eyes were wide, as she was torn in two pieces. Her blood flowed out of its mouth and onto Carly, and Carly's scream is what finally broke me, and I crumbled to the ground shaking and crying. It was full of horror, loss, and regret. I could feel Ben's movement from our still interlocked hands. He turned looking back, spotting the second beast. He pulled me to my feet, pulling me away from the group as the second beast grabbed Jake and its front legs. His pain screams followed us through the woods. Ben looked at me, pushing me to run faster. Then it cried out, a long, loud, barking howl. And the first ran after us as the second finished off Katie. Ben slowed literally pushing me forward ahead of him. I stumbled falling, looking back as the legs wrapped around him too, crushing his legs and torso as it bit into him. And the second beast caught up, snarling at me. I closed my eyes expecting to die, but only smelt its horrendous breath as it leaned into my face, hissing. It smelled like death and decay, yet also fresh blood. I still smell it, deep within my lungs. I backed away and spoke. It fucking talked to me. Get out, child. Remind the town. It almost sounded human, but something in it sounded wild and ancient. And then a searing pain crossed my face. I later learned the beast raked its clawed joints across my face. And from just above my right eyebrow, across my nose and down over my left cheek. A deep gash like the man suffered on his back. Somehow, I got home and fainted. I later woke up in hospital. My mum and sister were freaking out, asking me questions. I couldn't talk. I still can't talk. It hurts. The fear closes my throat, and I can't say anything. That's why my therapist had me type this. Well, hopefully, she'll help. Especially since everyone keeps looking at me. Like I'm some monster. A beast of the woods. I'll keep you guys updated. I'll see her next Tuesday and I'll tell you what she says. And I'll continue looking up about the guy with the gash and trying to figure out what happened to him. I recently found out why the forest next to my town is off limits. Part 2. Let's...
get straight into that. Updates 1, 3.27pm, Tuesday, after therapy. So, I did some research about werewolves and were animals, and some comforting news is that a lot of people don't believe a scratch can turn someone. Well, it's not definitive, but still encouraging that it's a mark to show the town, rather than turning me into one. That being said, on to my therapy session. Well, it was weird. Well, she read it and was rather quiet. Even after reading her account and something in her eye changed. She looked at me like I was different than before she'd read it. She told me not to post any updates or answer questions because people might get the wrong idea about this. I don't understand why she was saying this, but I'm writing this down now for the record in case something comes up. I have a weird feeling. Does she know something that I don't? She then talked about how that man was insane and later killed himself, but none of the reports said anything about suicide, just that his house was ransacked and like someone tried getting out. Well, speaking of the man with the gash, I did further research and found out he either died or disappeared after the house was destroyed. He also stayed inside for weeks after he came out the woods. I also did some more research about my town. It turns out the settlers combined with a small native family, making the town 179 generations old. The native family agreed to let them stay if they stayed out of the woods. Now, this new information suggests that the first beast is really old, beyond human years. The man went into the woods around generation 172, and so I think the beast can transform others somehow, but most werewolf esque creatures don't do so by scratches. I drew out what I saw, and you will be able to see this on screen now. So, I don't know how, but I passed out after I got home. I didn't even feel tired, but now that I'm awake, I feel nauseous. Update 3, 7.48pm, Tuesday. I just got dumb empty in my stomach. It looked wrong. Like black sludge, but I didn't eat anything. Whatever I ate, it doesn't look normal. I'll see if I can figure it out. I think my mom set up security cameras a few months ago because of a break-in. I'll check the feed and see if I can find anything. Update 4. 9.24pm, Tuesday. What the actual fuck? It took me several minutes before I could calm down enough to type this, but a weird thing was caught on camera. After I passed out on the couch, someone knocked on the front door. My mum answered and talked with someone. She took a bottle of black sludge from the stranger and nodded, I suppose thanking them. She then walked over to me and opened my mouth and poured the stuff into my mouth slowly. My mum put something in me. I feel betrayed. What was it she put in me, and why didn't she wake me up to have me drink it? Well, now that I think about it, she offered me a drink after I got home. Is it possible she drugged me, knowing that the person would come over and give her the sludge? Why did I have to be asleep to drink it, if she did drug me? Well, I suppose I wouldn't have drank it if she just gave it to me. And my mum came in with eyes wide with surprise. And so I asked, Hey mum, what was that stuff you gave me? And my voice is a bit raw and shaky still, but I'm starting to talk. And she looked at the screen where her form stood over a sleeping me, pouring the stuff into my mouth. She looked at me gently, grabbing my hands to guide me away. Oh Phoebe, don't worry about it. It was a charcoal cleanse. It helps detoxify any substances in your stomach. Well, I doubt that's what it was. That stuff is thin and more liquidy. The sludge was closer to the consistency of pudding. And why would I need a charcoal cleanse? I hadn't eaten or drank anything that was possibly toxic, except for what my mum had given me. And if it was dangerous, then why didn't she call poison control and take me to hospital? Update 5, 9.47pm, Tuesday. I'm sitting in my bed as I type this. I don't know who to trust besides Haley, my little sister, who agrees the sludge was weird. I'm giving her my account information in case anything happens and I can't update myself. The gash on my face is scabbed, but 
Oh, it looks wrong. It's darker than the scabs from the foliage when I ran through the woods. It shouldn't be infected. I was taken to the hospital and treated for my injuries. I've been trying to find something to cover it, but unlike the man, mine is way harder to hide. My anxiety is worse and it's hard to sit still. When I do, I find myself picking at the scabs on my arms and legs. Haley has agreed to stay in my room tonight and brought her camera. She set it up to look down at a queen-size bed, at us. It helped calm my nerves. Whatever my mum did, I'd know, and I had Haley to protect me. I hate that she has to protect me, but I'm grateful she is. I just hope that all of this goes away. She's also agreed to help me research tomorrow. Well, luckily, we're on a break, and we can stay home and research without sacrificing school. Now, Haley is so smart. She can get into a good college away from this town. Away from the beast. Away from mum and whoever gave her the sludge. She's incredibly talented and has a hunger for knowledge. Or if something happens to me, I know she'll investigate. Haley, I know you'll probably read this if something does go wrong. If I disappear like the man with the gash, please, God, please, stay out of the woods. Even if you think I disappeared in there, I can't have you going through what the rest of the group did. I don't want you to see those things. I love you, Haley, and I don't say it enough, but I truly do. You were always the best part of my life, and I'm proud to call you my sister. I'll update you with more information, and if anything weird begins happening, I'll screw what my therapist said. I'm posting this update, and as many more as I can. I recently found out why the forest next to my town is off limits. Part 3. Let's get straight into that. Update 6. 9.32am. Wednesday, February 23rd. I woke up nauseous again. Threw up dinner and that black stuff. I'll have to check the camera and see if there's anything on it. Or there wasn't anything. Literally nothing. I know Haley set it up to record and I saw the light. Or maybe Mum deleted it. But if it was another charcoal detox, why would she delete it? She's definitely lying to me. I don't know why she would, but she is. Update 7. 12.56pm, Wednesday, February 23rd. Well, Haley and I have been researching and we really can't find much more stuff. Like the town is trying to cover up what happened to the man leading up to his disappearance. I found out that his family spoke about it, but there's no record of it. Whatever they said must have been bad for someone. I think about the man a lot now. Most nights I have nightmares of him running out of the woods bleeding. Then to his family and friends who cared for him, but still kept a wary distance. Much like my friends and family. They then are crying and talking to police, but I can't hear anything but wind. And the case was shut down only three days after he disappeared. No one seemed to care that he disappeared besides his brothers and his mom. I don't think the town is as innocent in his disappearance as it's made out to be. Update 8. 5.56pm, Wednesday, February 23rd. I found a relative who seems to believe the man's story. I'll have to go see her soon, and maybe she'll have some evidence. Hopefully, whatever I can find out can help prevent the same fate happening to me. I set up the camera higher than last night and covered the blinking light so hopefully Mum won't notice. Haley has agreed to sleep with me again. I think it makes her feel safer as well. Update 9. 7.48am. Thursday, February 24th. I woke up again nauseous. Luckily this time the recording was there. It again showed my mum coming in and pouring that stuff into my mouth. Haley and I stepped through it all an intense 32 minutes as our mum put something in me. Now that Haley has seen the stuff, she's more defensive of me. We both decided to keep track of the colour of the scratch because, again, it still looks darker than yesterday. So, now there's a 
A lot of stuff to keep track of. Update 10. 12.03pm. Thursday, February 24th. I contacted Tracy and she has agreed to talk with me. I'm going later today, around 5, maybe 6. Haley wants to go with me and I'm thinking about letting her since next week she goes back to school. Well, Tracy said it's fine if she joins me, but I really don't know if I want a stranger to know my sister. Then again, this stranger's family has gone through what Haley is going through. Updates 11, 7.09 p.m. Haley went with me, and Tracy explained that a man had, according to his brother, stayed in his house for several weeks, and then suddenly came to his house crying and freaking out. He claimed he had quills growing from the wound, and then the next day the house was trashed and the man gone. He left the journal, but most of it is shredded. The only pages that aren't are about the wound and strange instances surrounding his weeks at home. I'll type everything out soon, since Tracy is lending me the journal. Transcript of the journal I don't think anyone will read this, but I am Albert Ivy Michaels, and I am the sole survivor of the expansion party. The town doesn't believe me. Figures, bunch of bigot assholes they are. The mayor is making me see some therapist. I think Mr. Richardson. And I've never seen this man in my life, yet he's supposedly been here longer than me. Yeah, right. That son of a bitch is saying it wasn't real, yet I've caught him in my house. I've tried locking the door and boarding up the windows, but he keeps getting in. The motherfucker's family was in my house. Two men held me down as they did something to me. I need to get out of here. These Richardson family are sick people. They are poisoning me, saying I wasn't meant to survive, saying I need to repent for escaping my fate. What in the bloody hell does that mean? They think there's something wrong with me, yet they are acting like cultists. My family has essentially turned their backs on me. Who needs them? Now get out of here on my own. Not even Matthew believes me. I showed him the scars, the quills, and yet he still doesn't believe me. I'll show them just how wrong they are. I'll expose the Richardsons for the cultists they are. End of transcript. So... At this point, I'm freaking out because my therapist is Miss Richardson. Either she moved here, and it's a coincidence, or she's part of the family, Albert, a.k.a. the man with the gash, called Coltis. Either way, I don't feel safe. Is my mum in on this somehow? Well, I'll dig around. Maybe if there's a connection to the Richardson family. Hopefully not. Oh, this place isn't safe. The Richardsons were doing something to Albert. Something severe enough for him to call them cultists. Maybe they did the same thing Mum's doing to me. I'll keep an eye out for quills. Update 12. 8.27pm. Tuesday, March 22nd. I haven't been updating because, well, Mum's been watching me like a hawk. But it turns out that we're five generations removed from the Richardson's name. Yay. So yes, Mum is probably in on this and... She probably is doing whatever they did to Albert. Now that I have found time away from her, I can update you guys. I have noticed a weird pattern where if I'm awake, Mum is nearly impossible to get away from. And now Aunt Casey has come over and sleeps most of the day. The camera setup has caught her multiple times watching Haley and me sleeping. That's oh, fucking creepy. At this point, I think they're waiting for something. Update 13, 9.36 a.m. Thursday, March 24th. I woke up with a normal black vomit. But fuck, how do I explain this without sounding batshit insane? They've carved something on my back. The Richardsons are cultists. Please, God, help me. Wow, 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 wow. Suddenly another one, wow. 
What a mysterious and intriguing three-part series there, from the incredible mind of deadly Ferris Will, from over on Reddit, no sleep. Would love to see more of this storyline, Deadly. Lots of room for expansion, and I love the refreshing take on the Webble floor. Of course, I really hope you enjoy my rendition, and look forward to any more updates in the future. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. My well, really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now if you think you can pen the next big hit or would just like to get in touch with me, please do so at the email address, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everyone's well and happy this week, getting a good start to the week with school or studying, or perhaps you're a long distance driver like so many of our listeners. Whatever it is that you do, I hope you're enjoying it and giving it your all. But above all guys, remember, be safe, not sorry. Pow, pow, pow. So, at this point, I'm freaking out because my therapist says, Fuck you. Hiya, ha, hiya, ha, everything's gonna be hiya, ha, ha, ha. Be safe. Not sorry. Fuck you.